Welcome to another video and today we're gonna talk about the weapons of Valorant. Valorant has a cool arsenal. Each gun is different and they all have their own strengths. And in this video I'm gonna talk about those strengths. I'm gonna give you one tip for every gun in Valorant. Now sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Let's start with the very classic gun, the classic. What makes the classic unique? Well, of course, the right-click option. A lot of Valorant players, and especially the newer players, think the right-click option is not very good. But they are wrong. The right-click option is very strong, if you know what you're doing. So the tip for the classic, learn when to use the right-click option. There are multiple situations when the right-click is strong. For example, if you hit an enemy a few times in his body, but you don't kill him, so you try to run away and you want to go for one extra shot, like in this clip. Or if you know an enemy is low, so only one shot needs to connect, like on this brimstone. Next gun, the shorty. Like the name suggests, you should use this gun on short range. But that would be a very boring tip, so here's another tip. If you're planning to use this gun on the defender side, for example, and the enemies don't push what you're holding, it's very hard to retake with this gun. So what you can do is, before the barriers are going down, drop your shorty on the ground, take a classic in your hand, and when the round starts, pick up your shorty again. This way, if the enemies don't push you, you can always take your classic and go for the retake. If you do it the other way around, then the classic will disappear, so no bueno. Let's move on, the frenzy, the only automatic pistol. Here's my tip, you should know how to use this gun on short range, mid range and long range. Of course you need to pay attention to that with every gun in Valorant, but it's even more important with the Frenzy, because if you use the gun wrong on the different range, it will not be that effective. Here's how to use it. On short range, always go for the head. On mid range, it's all about spray control. Practice the spray control in a deathmatch for example, and there's nothing wrong with crouching if you shot like 5 bullets already, to get a little more accuracy. And long range probably doesn't come as a surprise, but tap fire the enemies. Then we go to the Ghost. My tip for this gun is that you always should have a game plan before you buy this gun. This is a pistol that's perfect for lurking, because when you are lurking there's a chance that you will see the enemy from far away, and this is the best long range pistol. But often, and especially in eco rounds if the enemy has rifles, the next gun, the Sheriff, is way better. Because of course it can one tap headshot an enemy with full armor if he isn't too far away. But that's where a lot of people struggle with, the headshot part. So here's my tip, it sounds so simple, but it's something that especially lower Edo players are not really doing, and that's taking your time to aim for the head. A lot of times when people see an enemy, they stress and they shoot as fast as possible, but that's no bueno my friend, just take your time, calm down, aim for the head and shoot. Whoa! The Stinger, what can we tell about this gun? Well, first of all, it only has 20 bullets and the fire rate is extremely fast. On top of this, this gun doesn't do a lot of damage per bullet and that's why the tip of this gun is that you should reload as often as possible. Yep, my friends, I said it, you should play Call of Duty style. It's very hard to get multiple kills with only one magazine and you don't want to run out of bullets mid-fight. So after each kill, try to reposition yourself and try to reload. However, if you see multiple enemies, every bullet should count, so in that case, take your time to aim for the head and make sure you have enough bullets for both enemies. One enemy oh la la. Yeah. Hey. Next SMG, the Spectre. For most players, this is the go-to in every half buy or force buy round. And the tip I'm gonna give about this gun might be a bit controversial, but on short range and even on mid range, you could decide to go for a run and gun play. Don't do this every round, of course, standing still is usually better, but if you do it so now and then, you have a chance to dodge the enemy's bullets, and if you get an enemy with a run and gun, they will probably be mad, tilted, and they might perform worse. Let's move on with the first big shotgun, the Bucky. The tip for this gun is actually the main inspiration of this video, because I recently learned something knew about this gun that I didn't know for 3 years, until someone submitted it for the tips and tricks sent by you series. Here's how it goes. Instead of doing the cheek cheek after each shot, you should reload after each shot. Somehow I never knew this, so there must be some people out there that also didn't know this mechanic, but you can reload the bucky shot in about the same time as you can do the cheek cheek. So use it my friends. Next weapon, the judge. The tip I'm gonna give about the judge is not really about how to use the gun, because I think most of us already know how to use this gun. You know, try to get on short range and spam your left click mouse button, but the tip is about when to use this gun. I would recommend to use the judge in those games when you don't perform very well. I'm really sorry for those players who are maining the judge, but getting kills with this weapon is not that hard. And when you don't perform well, you aren't able to hit those headshots and body shots. And then a good alternative is to just go for that judge, camp somewhere around the corner in Bind Hookah for example, and hope to get kills that way. Let's move on to the light machine guns now, the Ares. I'm gonna be honest with you, the Ares is one of those guns that I personally never use. If I only have 1600 credits, I always go for the Spectre instead. 
but this does not mean that the Ares is bad. Did you for example know that the randomness of the bullet spread after spraying with the Ares is the smallest compared to every other gun in Valorant? Mr. Lowlander, my brain, that hurt, what do you mean? Okay, yeah, that sentence was a bit complicated. So in simple words, the Ares is the easiest gun to spray with. This makes this gun perfect for the people who want to spray on mid to long range. And I think it's the best gun for the more beginner players, so they can learn how to control their spray. It's also the gun that I recommended to my girlfriend when she started playing Valorant. Next gun, the Odin. This gun has a unique mechanic that not a lot of people know about. Usually, aiming down the sight is not the way to play Valorant. If you use a Vendel for example and you aim down the sight, your fire rate will go down and that's not very good. But with the Odin, this is completely the opposite. If you aim down the sights with this weapon, your fire rate will go up and your spray is way easier to control. So a tippy, try to aim down the sights when using this gun. Even if you are using a Sofa Arrow for example and want to wall bang, the extra fire rate is really useful so aim through that scope. Another gun where aiming down the sights could be a valuable tactic is the Bulldog. If you scope with this weapon, you will change from automatic fire to burst fire. And the burst fire of the Bulldog is extremely accurate. Just look at the clip in the background. As you see, the Bulldog will stay very steady. It doesn't move up a lot after the first shot. In fact, it hardly moves at all. So if you see an enemy on long range, go for those burst fires. Next up, the Guardian, one of the most underrated guns in my opinion. If you manage to hit those headshots, you get insane value out of this gun. But uh, that's where a lot of people go wrong. If you manage to hit those headshots. If you're a bit like me, then uh, you don't manage to hit those headshots. And that's why the tip about the Guardian is this. This is one of those guns that you really should practice with in a deathmatch, for example. If you put in the hours with the Guardian, you know exactly how to aim for the head with this gun. And on top of this, using the Guardian in the deathmatch is a perfect way to train your aim. This way, you force yourself to aim for the head in the death matches and not just spray on the body with a Vandal. Let's move on to the next rifles now, the Vandal and the Phantom. These two weapons I will group into the same category because they're basically the same but also very different. A thing they have in common though is that they are the go-to weapon for most players out there. And since they cost the same amount of money, a lot of people have the question when do I use which gun? Here's the short answer. You should buy the Phantom if you're planning to play on short angles because on short angles you will insta headshot and on long range not. They don't Oh what? Minus 140 jet. Buy the Phantom if you're one of those players that likes to spam through smokes. This is because the Phantom has a suppressor and because of the suppressor the enemies won't be able to see your bullet tracers. Very useful for H's like Viper to be sneaky peeky inside the ultimate. And the last point, buy the Phantom if you feel your aim is off. Because of the higher fire rate of the Phantom, you can get away with spraying a bit more often. On the other side we have the Vandal, this one is an insta kill headshot on every range. So buy this gun if you don't want to get tilted by the minus 140 of the Phantom. And then um, to be honest, that's like the only upside of the Vandal, but it's a big upside because that one tap headshot on every range is very OP, especially if you feel your aim is on. But before we go to the snipers, after giving all this information about the Vandal or the Phantom, here's the biggest tip I can give about these guns, and that's that you should play the gun that you feel like playing with. In the end, I think it's more about the mindset than about the strengths of these guns. They are so well balanced, so if you feel like playing the Phantom, just go for that gun even if you're playing on long range, and if you feel like playing the Vandal even though you play Viper, go for it. I know, I know, it's not the optimal way of playing Valorant, but I think the mental mindset is a bit more important over here. They are both overpowered anyway. Let's go to the snipers now and let's start with the Marshall. I'm gonna cheat here a little bit because for this gun I got two tips. The first one is simple, it's the same as the Bucky. With the Marshall you can also do the reload trick. Between each shot, instead of doing the cheek cheek, you could also go for the reload, so you don't have to reload at the end of the five shots. But the next Marshall tip is even more important. The Marshall is actually pretty accurate on mid to short range if you don't scope. And on top of that, the fire rate is pretty high. So if you see an enemy on mid to short range, consider just shooting on him. When you do this, I would recommend to aim for the head if the enemy is very close to you. But if he's on mid range, just aim for the body. More chance to hit him. And remember, of course, on long range, go for the headshots. Oh, oh, one more, one more. Oh, oh, easy peasy watermelon. Next weapon, the Outlaw, the newest gun in Valorant. A mistake that I see a lot of people making is that they use the two shots way too quick after each other. The mindset when people use this gun is often, oh, I just go for two body shots, easy peasy kill. But this is not how to use the Outlaw, my friends. The reason why this gun is so strong is that if you see multiple enemies pushing, you can quickly go for two headshots and get two kills instead of one with the operator. So don't be lazy and aim for the body, but take your time and aim for the head, and then easy peasy kills for you with the Outlaw. <laughs> Oh, oh, Outlaw is maybe good. And then we have the Operator, my friends. This is the strongest sniper in the game, and in the right hands, it could very well be the best gun in the game. That's, of course, if you know how to use it. Here's my tippy for this gun. There are three types of shots that you need to control. The reaction time shot, this is when you hold an angle, wait till an enemy walks into your scope, and then shoot as fast as possible. One enemy remaining. 
The slow peek, this is when you slowly peek around the corner, check every angle and shoot as soon as you see the enemy. Ooh. And the flicks, this is when you look at something but you see an enemy somewhere else, so you need to flick to his body and then shoot. Uh. All these type of peaks you can easily practice in death matches. So do that. You need to put in the hours if you want to get better with this gun. Alternatively, if you want to practice the flicks, this is what I usually do for warm up. I load in the range, go to these drones and I purposely aim either to the left or the right of these drones and then flick to them as fast as possible. This is the perfect warm up for this gun. And that's it my friends. Every gun in Valorant. Chamber, sorry you don't count. I'll save you for another video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I see you guys in the next one. Peace.